Well, good morning, church family. I'd like to welcome you this morning to First Methodist Church Sweetwater. I'm Pastor Tyler, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, let's, let's try it again. That sounded a little bit too somber. We're going to try to be a little bit more excited and exuberant this morning, all right? For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Indeed, we, we can rejoice and be glad in it, especially because we can declare we are children of God through Christ Jesus. We are His, and we get to gather freely as His people. That is good news. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship. Amen. What a true statement, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Well, again, so thankful you're here with us today at First Methodist Church Sweetwater. And uh, just want to invite you at this time, if you will, grab your attendance pads at the end of your pews. Those are red booklets there. If you would, make sure and put your information down in those and let us know of your attendance. Make sure and register, register that. We'd greatly appreciate it. You'll also see that, that there are next step cards in the pews there in front of you. Those are for you to let us know about prayer requests or maybe your desire to join the church or be baptized. Uh, but if you will, grab that and fill that out and you can bring it up later on this morning during offering, which is during communion. You can come forward and place it here in the offering basket at the front of the sanctuary, uh, which also reminds me that we do have offering envelopes there in the pews in front of you, and you can give your offering this day through that and place it again in the offering basket later on during service, or you can mail in your offering, or you can give it through uh, our online uh, website, which is at fmcsweetwater.church, and, uh, or you can come by and visit us and bring us some cookies and, and bring your offering. We'd appreciate that. The one thing you do need to know about your offering is it helps us to live in our mission statement as a global Methodist church, which is as follows. If we can get that up on the screen. Thank you, Mr. Will. Let's say this together. Oh, go back to the mission statement. There we go. Let's say this together. The global Methodist church exists to make disciples of Jesus Christ and spread scriptural holiness across the globe. That is our mission. That is our purpose. All right. 
A few other announcements, things for you to be made aware of. And so as you see the kiddos going out this side door here, we have some pumpkins out there that are decorated by our CDO teachers, all right, our Children's Day Out teachers. And this is a fundraiser for uh, Children's Day Out for that program, uh, for that ministry, rather, of our church. We'd love for you to help be a part of this fundraiser. All you have to do is go out there and look at the pumpkins that are decorated, and you have to vote on a particular pumpkin, all right? And all you do to cast your vote is you take your cash, like this $20 bill that I'm going to place in there later on today. Uh, you go out there, and you take the cash that's in your pocket, and you put it into the cup that's in front of the pumpkin that you like the best, all right? It's a great little fundraiser for CDO. would love for you all to help contribute to that. In fact, I'm going to ask Anna, why don't you come up here and grab this and go ahead and go vote for me? I'm going to let you choose. Make a good choice. All right. Thank you, baby girl. Other announcements, things for you to be made aware of is that we do have youth tonight from 5 to 7 o'clock here at the church. This is for grades 6 through 12th. Would love to have them here with our youth ministry. There is a parent meeting for all youth uh, parents that's going to be at 4 o'clock in Fellowship Hall as well, and so we'd love to have you be a part of that. And then this Wednesday, we do have our family refuel, our church family refuel night from 5.45 to 6, uh, 7.30, excuse me, 5.45 to 7.30. And the meal this week is going to be chicken and dumplings. It's not going to be quite as warm as, or uh, cool as we were hoping for it to be for chicken and dumplings, but that's what we have uh, for the menu this Wednesday. And then also this Tuesday is our final softball game. It's going to be out at the park at 8.30. I'm not sure which field. I'll make sure and get a message sent out to you, but this is our our final game. We have lost two games, and I think our record were seven and two. Wes, does that sound right? Seven and two. So we're doing pretty good. Uh, we'd love to have you all there for our final game to cheer us on and and to maybe just give us a hard time even. But we'd love to have you be a part of that. And then last but not least, you'll notice we're bombarding you with all the stuff in your your bulletins. And so in our uh, bulletins today, we still have the RSVP. Uh, for the consecration meal that is next Sunday. If you have not turned one of these in, we need this today. This is the deadline for this, okay? Now, I need all eyes and ears. I do this with all the kiddos. You got to grab your ears and pull your ears, and it puts a bubble in your mouth, and you pay attention. So I need you to all just pay attention just for a few seconds. If you have not, again, filled this out, we need this today if you are planning on attending the, our, or, uh, the consecration meal. Sorry, I'm so distracted. I'm trying to figure out what's going on today with all the kids wandering around, but um, I'm loving it. So I love having kids here. Um, but we need you to, again, fill this out if you will. One of the things we need from you is to make sure and put the uh, number of people who are going to be going from your family, and then also take, if you will, and indicate if you would like chicken or beef, all right? Chicken or beef, and then put the names of all the, the family members, okay? So not just the number, but also the names of the family members, and then chicken or beef. And then you can bring that forward and place it in the offering basket. But we need this today, because we've got to turn in our numbers tomorrow to our caterer, okay? And so that is next Sunday. Our consecration meal will take place right after service. We would love to have you be a part of that. I'm just going to let you know, if for some reason you don't RSVP, we can't guarantee that we will have a plate for you, okay? So we would love for you to be here again next Sunday. Just make sure you fill that out. I'm going to invite you, if you will, now this is the trick, you're going to have to stand up and then you're going to be seated again because we have the choir singing today. So I'm going to invite you to stand up, if you will, and join me in our call to worship, and then right afterwards you're going to be seated, and the choir's got a special for us. Power and might and majesty belong to God who created and is creating. Like the image of the powerful wind and heavens as a garment, God's majesty is revealed in all creation. Who are we that God should pay attention to us? We are God's beloved children, stewards whom God has selected to care for God's world. Amen. You may be seated.
stand and join our voices as we sing our opening hymn on page 298, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. So, Lord, we thank you again for the opportunity we have to gather as your people. For we are gathered in the name of Christ Jesus, not in the name of First Methodist Church, not in our own name, but in the name of Christ Jesus. We thank you for the life that we have through Christ. We thank you that we can declare we are your people, your sons and your daughters. We thank you that because of our identity found in you, we have the promise of your presence with us through the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, we pray that you'd be with us this day as we continue in worship. We pray right now for our brothers and sisters across the street at 4th and Elm Church of Christ. We pray blessings over their services, over their ministries this day. Would you move in a powerful and mighty way? Would, would you speak through those who declare your word? Would you be with their worship? We also pray for all the other churches here in Sweetwater this day, Lord. Would you move in a powerful way? We pray for all in Sweetwater to know the name of Jesus, that all might be able to proclaim that they belong to you. And Holy Spirit, again, as we continue in worship, free us from distractions. Help us to be present right here and now. We love you and we give you praise. And it's through Christ we pray. Amen.
the church family work together to help each other out. Thank you, Lori. So it's always, it's always interesting when things don't go as smooth, but it's still, again, part of that family. At this time, we want to invite all of our kiddos, if you will, follow Miss Becky out. So you'll go to this door over here. I think Avery is going that way, too. Invite Miss Judy to come on up and read for us this morning. You are unmuted and ready to go, sister. Kiddos, kiddos, y'all keep on going. Hey, as you're walking out there, kiddos, get Miss Becky, let you have a, a few minutes, look at the pumpkins, y'all decide which one you like the best, and when you come back, tell mom and dad they need to put some cash in there for a vote, all right? Aren't y'all so thrilled to see so many kiddos here this morning? What a blessing. Earlier, whenever the band was practicing, the kiddos were sprinting around and making a bunch of noise, and I was like, y'all need to be quiet, and I started to tell them to be quiet, and then I thought, you know what, no, that's a great thing for a church to have so many kiddos, and just the energy, it's so, so important to the vitality of a church, and so we're so thankful they are all here with us today. All right, Miss Judy, it's all you. Today's scripture reading comes from Psalm 104, God the Creator and Provider. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. 
You set the earth on its foundation so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they flee. At the sound of your thunder they take to flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, everywhere we look, we see the imprint of your creative love. The wondrous works of nature show your majesty. As we have gathered today to celebrate your love and creation, keep us mindful that we are part of that created order, meant to be stewards and not destroyers. Prepare us to work for you in everything we do within First Methodist Church in Sweetwater and in our community. We ask now that you be with Tyler as he proclaims your word. Open our minds and our hearts to receive your truth proclaimed. For it's in the name of Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. Now before I share a short word with you this morning, I want to invite uh, Tony and Wesley Gill to uh, come forward. They're going to share a short testimony with you uh, just about how God has allowed them to be stewards over the gifts and the talents that God has given to them. And uh, one of the things that I have figured out, so I've been here almost, I guess I'm, I'm coming up on 10 months. we got some incredible people in this church. I'm just going to say that. And, uh, and this is an incredible family. We're so thankful for you here at First Methodist Church Sweetwater. I'm thankful for your presence in my family's life and uh, thankful for the friendship of our, our kiddos. What a beautiful thing. So I give it to you guys. Thank you. Good morning. Today we come to you to visit a little about the gifts that God has put in our past to help us to glorify Him throughout our marriage and careers. Many of you who know me may think I can be a little ridiculously competitive and hard-headed at times, especially if you play church league softball. <laughs> But believe it or not, that ridiculousness has also been a gift and served me well when used towards the things God has had planned out for me. From a young age, I grew up only knowing what it was like to be the kid of small business owners. I heard the discussions. I witnessed the struggles. I got to hear them celebrate for their accomplishments, and I got to celebrate with them. Because as a kid, to see your parents excited and happy about something God has brought them is pretty awesome, and you just don't forget those moments. Growing up, we lived several miles out in the country and didn't always make it to church. However, my mom especially has always been a big prayer warrior and tried her best to set, up, to set us around the kitchen table for a Bible study and prayer on some of those Sundays when we missed. This, in turn, impacted my prayer life tremendously at a young age, and even when I didn't think to read the Word, I would pray quite often. The older I got, the more I wanted to be involved in learning about the business things from them, rather helping with filing and books or riding with my dad to help him check wells and hearing him talk all about business and just all the wisdom he has from how he grew up. This was all such an amazing gift from the Lord, to be raised learning about these things I never could have imagined would be such a beneficial gift from our Father in Heaven as I grew. I also grew up with hardworking parents. I can't remember either of my parents ever not working. My mom is still working, not because she has to, but because she loves helping people. She loves serving people and she connects with people unlike anyone I've ever known. Her and my dad's perseverance through good times and tough times was a gift for me to see and experience. They were also heavily involved in our church, and in turn, so were us kids. We did a lot of serving growing up. I remember one Christmas, my folks came to us and said, this year, we aren't doing gifts. We're going to the hospital, and we're going to pass out roses and pray with people. 
I'll forever be grateful for the things that God showed me through my parents. After Tony and I got married, we struggled for a time. We were living in the Metroplex with high rent and not enough pay. We'd work at our professional jobs during the day and then valet park cars in the evenings. We also sold pretty much anything of value to make ends meet. We struggled, but I don't think there was ever a time that we thought we aren't going to make it. We just kept on pushing through. We know looking back how much it was the strength and fight he gave us inside to keep moving forward even the lowest of hardships during those times. When we moved to Sweetwater, Wes was in the oil field and I had just gotten my real estate license with dreams of becoming a broker someday and owning my own business just like my mom and dad. I soon began to realize just how much I loved the structure of dealing in real estate. It's an absolute amazing feeling to help others during such exciting times in their life. After about four years, I did get my broker's license. And after a few more years, I decided it was time to jump into the dream of owning our own business. After a few years, Wes left the oil patch to run the show with me. And it's been such an incredible blessing to run a business together as my parents did. We also learned that we had a niche for investing and the desire to invest back into our community when we and some partners decided to purchase a complex here in town. It's been a joy to restore that complex into housing that our community can enjoy and be proud to call home. The Lord has gifted us so much from the gifts he gave us to do all the things that we have been able to do in our career to the blessing of living in a place where the things we are able to do in our business can also bring joy to our community, which makes our business very enjoyable most of the time. <laughs> Since choosing FMC as our church home, we have grown more every year in our business. Being able to contribute financially to our church that does so much within our community was definitely a goal we strive to be able to do someday. We were so thankful the first year we had become stable enough to begin committing a steady contribution to our church. And through God's grace and blessings, we have been able to increase our contributions over the years and do other things within our area to help be stewards to our community and give back. In closing, we want to be sure it's said and always said, the only reason this has been possible is through keeping our faith in our Savior. We didn't always understand what that meant, and at times prayer was all we thought to do and not much else. But we grew in wisdom through our faith in him. We want our life to be a living testimony to his glory and grace, and we'll continue to strive to grow in him and allow him to show us the way and open the doors he has planned for us. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for sharing a short word, just a testimony how God has moved in your life. And thinking about, again, the gifts, the abilities that y'all have, competitiveness and all in softball, getting a hole-in-one in golf, hitting a home run all in the same week, right? All the different gifts. And, you know, something I would just invite you to do for a few seconds here, church families, look around the sanctuary here. Look around at each other and think about the different gifts and uh, graces that are represented here, the talents. Look around. Find the person in here. If you were gonna, if you needed a construction project, everyone look towards the person that you would ask for a construction project. Go ahead. Make some eye contact here. Looking at you, Ken Becker. I'm sure there's some other folks. If you needed someone to help you with some banking stuff, we got a, a, a banker in here. Somebody who's pretty aware. A couple of folks, right? What about a lawyer? We got a couple of lawyers in here. What about farmers, ranchers? We can go down the list. But the truth is, is that we all have different talents, different gifts that God has given to us. And we're called to use those to honor and glorify him to help bless the church, both locally and globally. And to the Gills, I thank y'all so much again for how you are such a blessing to our local church here at First Methodist Church Sweetwater, but also a blessing to the church globally and, and here in the community of Sweetwater. I thank you for all that you do, for your willingness to pour into others, to use those gifts, those talents that God has given to you. 
So we've been talking about honeybees, and, and hopefully this has stuck with some of you. I was gifted by the Lawrences, Vicki and Terry, a little cute magnetic uh, honeybee, and it, and it just made me so happy because that means that someone's listening. They're, they're following along with the honeybee thing, and I appreciate that so much. But as we've been talking about honeybees uh, and, and thinking about the roles that honeybees have, I, I think it's important to consider the different types of bees that you would find within a colony. And so what you would find is you would find a queen, you would find drones, and then you would find worker bees. Now we think about the roles of a queen and, a, and, a, and the drones, it's, it's pretty minimal. It's very few things that they do. But when you talk about a worker bee, a worker bee has this many roles. Are you ready? So worker bees are responsible for nursing, attending to the queen, building the honeycomb, Receiving pollen and receiving nectar, pollen packing, nectar ripening, comb capping, hive repair, dead bee removal. I know that sounds like horrible, but they're responsible for getting the dead bees out of the colony. Why? So there's no bacteria or anything that grow and wipe out the whole colony. They're responsible for guarding and protecting the hive. They're responsible for foraging. They're responsible for finding new places to build a colony. And then last but not least, they're responsible for temperature regulating. Temperature regulating. We'll come back to that here in a little bit. But it's been interesting talking about the honeybees and thinking about the gifts and graces that God has given those honeybees so that we can have honey. And it's interesting to think about the gifts and graces that God has given to us so that we might bless, again, the church, but also bless the world. And so today we're going to be looking in Acts chapter 16 at a, a, a few verses about a woman named Lydia. But before we get there, just a little bit of context for you. So in Acts chapter 16, we'll see that Paul and Silas, they're on their second missionary journey. And Timothy has now joined the mission, as you can read in verses 1 through 5. And they're called to go to Macedonia, as you can read in verses 6 through 10. And it looks like someone else joins them in verse 10, which is more than likely Luke. That's what most scholars believe. But it's here in Macedonia that they make way to Philippi, which is a Roman colony, and, and it doesn't appear that they have a proper synagogue, as we'll see here in a second. And so they go to worship by the riverside where there are some God-fearing women gathered together in prayer. And I'm going to try to pronounce this the same every time, but Thyatira, as we'll read here in a little bit, was a city in Asia, and it was specifically the district of which... Uh, Lydia came from, and it is the district of Lydia, which is probably how she got her name. But this area was known for their special purple dye there, uh, and, and it was known as being for royalty. And so if you were a person who sold this purple cloth, you were likely a wealthy person. And that leads us to our text for today from Acts chapter 16, verses 11 through 15. Hear now the word of God. We therefore set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace the following day to, to Neapolis. Neapolis. Cannot read today. Here we go. And from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. And a certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. She encouraged us to go and stay there. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, Holy Spirit, would you open up our hearts and our minds and our ears for this short word? Would you anoint the words that come from my mouth, as few as they may be, would they be powerful and impactful for each and every one of us? We thank you for the time we have to gather as your people, for the different gifts and talents you've given to us, and how we might use those to honor and glorify you, to be a blessing to this church, and to the church globally. For it's in the name of Christ we do pray. Amen. And so Lydia is only mentioned here in Acts chapter 16 in the verses we read, as well as in Acts chapter 16, verse 40. And it's here where Paul and Silas will go back to say farewell to her. And, and what it's believed is that she eventually was the host home for the church in Philippi, and that she was actually one who helped lead that church. 
And it's also believed that she's the one who was financially supporting Paul's missionary journeys. As you can read in Philippians verses 1 through 5, or 1, 5, and then Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 through 19. And it's fascinating to think about Lydia because her gift, when I read it, was dyeing cloth purple. It doesn't sound that extraordinary. But because of this business, because of her using her gift to do that, she had become a businesswoman successful. That she had a home where she even had servants who were there. That she had a home that as she came into the faith and understanding who Christ Jesus is, she opened up that home so that it might be a place for the local church there in Philippi to gather. I can only imagine that she used her gifts as a business person to take and bring order and structure to that church, which is probably pretty necessary. As a business person, that she was intentional taking what God had blessed her with, that she was a steward over, and blessing others, and specifically blessing the mission trips that Paul had. You see, Paul had to have some source of income so that he could be provided for with food and with shelter, right? He depended on host homes, but he depended on financial resources to help, again, spread the gospel. Because of Lydia, the gospel was spread. Because of Lydia, the gospel was spread. I think sometimes, church family, we, we take and we limit what God can do with our gifts and graces. Maybe some of you are like me and you think, well, what is my gift? I have the gift of gab. That's what I have the gift of, right? Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. And sometimes I question that because I'm, I'm kind of weird. I keep it weird, right, John? Sometimes that's my person. I'm like, well, God, I don't know about this gift that I have, but what I've seen is that God has equipped me. He has wired me. He, as I talked about with some little kiddos just earlier this week in chapel, God knit me together in my mother's womb. He's given me the talents, the gifts and graces I have. And it's not for me and just blessing me, but it's to bless all the world and to bless the church. Maybe my gift was just to dye purple cloth, but you know what? God gave me the ability to become a successful business person and then in turn to host Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke in my home to be a financial blessing to help them. In fact, I would be willing to bet whatever gifts and talents you have, you're probably using those right now, are you not, to, to provide income for your family to help out there. You've kind of found your little niche, your area. But we're called to take whatever God has given to us and our talents and our gifts and use those to glorify, to honor Him, to be a blessing to those around us, to be a blessing to the church, and not just within the walls, but also outside the walls of the church. How we might serve the community of Sweetwater and serve the world. Sometimes we psych ourselves out. We were talking about it this morning a little bit in Sunday school class, the fear that we sometimes live into this maybe not feeling good enough, or what do I have to offer but it's amazing when we take our gifts and our talents and we place them into the hands of Jesus, what he can do in and through us. But that's our call. Whatever your skills are, to place them into the hands of Jesus, to be a good steward over those gifts and use them for his glory. As we've been talking about giving financially, and this is, again, Stewardship Month, and it's not intended to be pressure, but one of the things that I certainly recognize is that the finances that you commit to this church, that you give to this church, I recognize you have had to trade your skills and your talents to have that financial provision to bless and help this church out. Which, by the way, just a quick note, did y'all look in your bulletin today and see what the church was able to help out do with the Lifehouse community? Look there on the right side, where you're supposed to be taking notes, but you're doodling instead. Look right there. You'll see that there's a note about how our church was able to be a blessing to those who are in need of housing here in this community. Those who are trying to get back up on their feet because of your generosity, because of the generosity of the church, we were able to give $21,000 towards this. What a blessing. 
But I recognize that that financial blessing only comes from the work, the labor. Those of us, again, who are giving and who are using the gifts that God has given us to have the income, to give to things like that. But don't downplay, please, what God has allowed you to be a steward over. Whatever that gift is, don't ever... Maybe your gift is a gift of prayer. Maybe your gift is to get up here and speak, and maybe you haven't told me yet, and it's time for you to get up here and preach some Sunday, right? Maybe your gift is music. Maybe your gift is media. Maybe your gift is ranching, farming. Maybe your gift is banking. Maybe your gift is construction. Maybe your gift is knitting. Fill in the blank. The question is, is how are you using that to honor and glorify God? How are you blessing your local colony, your local church, so that we might be a blessing to the world? So those worker bees, one of their, their tasks is to regulate the temperature of the colony. All right, now some of you probably know what happens during the winter with the worker bee, right? And the bees, they, they cluster around the queen. And so they gather around the queen and they form a big, I guess, I don't know what you call it, just a cluster of bees, right? To keep the queen bee warm. And they'll circle around, they'll, they'll, they'll do, go through a cycle. So they'll go from the inside to the outside as they get cold. And they work together to bless each other, Right? to keep each other warm. But did you know that during the hotter times of the year, I had no clue about this, during the hotter times of the year, in order to regulate the temperature of the hive, a worker bee will stand at the door, if you will, the entrance to the hive. And worker bees will stand there and they will simply fan as fast as they can to cause airflow to go through there to cool the colony. That's their task. So what are you good at as a worker bee? Well, do you go out and forage flowers and do you go out and chase people and scare them because you can fly 15 to 20 miles per hour? Or do you, do you go out and what do, you, what do you do? I stand at the door and I fan it to make sure it's cool, right? Amen, yeah. In West Texas, we appreciate that, right? That's my role. That's what I do. But because that, that worker bee does that, it helps regulate the temperature and it helps... The colonies survive within. They don't cook to death, right? And it helps them in the process of making that sweet, amazing food that we have called honey. They're a blessing to their colony because they survive off the honey that's made, and they're a blessing to the world because they provide honey for all of us. Don't downplay, if you're that worker bee, that all you do is fan your wings. That's important. Don't downplay if you're a, a, a person who's known for dyeing purple cloth and you make a business of it. Don't downplay the resources that God has given to you, no matter how small or how big you think they are. Your role as God's people, my role as a child of God, is to take in place my gifts that God has given me into his hand and say, what would you do in and through me, Lord? Whatever that looks like. Maybe your gift is you have a beautiful smile. And your gift is to go out and share that smile with the world. But I just want to challenge you as a church family. I want to challenge you to really assess what are those talents, what are those skills I have. You know, I look at Travis and I think about the ability to work with weather, right? That's awesome. You shake your head, but that's an amazing gift. I've seen your work, man. Right? I couldn't do that. but I want to challenge you to think about what are your gifts? What are your skills? Give God praise for those. Don't compare yourself to other people. Give God praise for your gifts. And then ask God, how can I use this gift even more so to honor and glorify you? What does it look like for me to place these into your hands? How can I use those gifts to be a blessing to my local church? And then how from there can we be a blessing to the world? Because that is our prayer, that we're truly blessing the world, that we're truly making disciples. But it takes all of us, just like that whole colony, it takes all of them to survive and thrive. It takes all of us. It can't just be a select few. Some of you maybe will get your toes stepped on when I say this, and they need to be stepped on. Some of you might be really equipped and good for church leadership and helping us out around the church. 
and you're thinking, no, not me, I'm too busy, or I'm retired. Eh, wrong answer. If God is pushing you and motivating you, come on, come help us. All right? So, Lord, we thank you so much for how you have gifted us in so many different ways. We thank you most of all for the gift of life that we have through Christ Jesus, that we can declare we are your people. We thank you for people like Lydia in Scripture who had a gift that maybe in our perspective doesn't seem big, but in reality she was able to make a business out of it and be successful. And because of that, she was stirred to use that gift to equip your people long ago to open up her home to help the church in Philippi thrive, to bless the mission trips of Paul and I'm sure so many others, to bless the church. Lord, help us to see those gifts that you've given to us so that we might be a blessing to this world. Lord, help us again to see the greatest gift that we have, which is life through Christ Jesus. Help us to see that we are a steward over the gospel. We are called to go out and proclaim Christ to all the world. Free us from distraction in this moment. Help us to be reflective upon, again, the gift of life we have through Christ and the call you have in our life to be used by you. Amen. And so it was on the night in which Christ was betrayed that he took bread, he broke it, he had given thanks to you, Lord, and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. When the supper was over, he took the cup in the same way, he lifted it up, and he gave thanks to you, O Lord, and he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you gather in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, we do ask now that you make this be for us truly the body and the blood of Christ, that we might truly be for the world the body of Christ, that they might know the good news of Christ Jesus by the way we take, again, the gifts, the talents that you've given to us, and we use them to honor and glorify you, to be a blessing. As we come forward for communion, would you just give us the ability again to reflect upon where it is maybe we have been selfish with these gifts, with these talents? Or maybe we've had self-doubt. Maybe we've been struggling with comparing ourselves to others. Would you help us to see where it is you're calling for us to be faithful in giving our gifts to you and allowing you to use us? Would you remind us again of the greatest gift we have through Christ Jesus? For it's in his name we pray. Amen. I want to invite the communion stewards, if you will, come forward at this time. And just a reminder that here at First Methodist Church, we believe that this is the Lord's table, not our table. And so all are welcome to come and partake in Holy Communion. We believe this is a means of grace where God is meeting you. You do not have to be a professing member of this church. You just need to be earnestly seeking after the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We do have a gluten-free option here in the middle that Miss Jerry will be holding, so you'll just come to her. We're going to be taking communion by intention, so if you're new to this, what's going to happen is you'll be given a piece of bread and told that this is the body of Christ broken for you. You'll take that bread before eating it, and you'll dip it in the cup and be told this is the blood of Christ shed for you, all right, and then you'll partake. Church family, the table is ready. I invite you to come.
thank you for this time of Holy Communion. We thank you for the reminder of your people, of the greatest gift, again, that we have received through Christ Jesus. We thank you that we can declare we are yours. I'll just think about even this service, Lord, and seeing all the different talents as I walk by David and crowd him, and he's able to still continue to focus and play guitar, Lord, for the voices, for the organization, for those who are helping with the media, Lord, we're just so grateful that we can gather as your people. We're thankful that you take, again, those different, different gifts and talents you've given to us that when we place them in your hands, they can be used in a powerful way. Lord, for stories like Miss um, Lydia in Scripture there in Acts 16 and her desire to, again, be a blessing for your people and ultimately to have a, a chapter in the story of the gospel spreading. 
Lord, we thank you again for the gift of life that we have through Christ. And we thank you. We thank you for this time to reflect upon who we are as your people. For it's in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. So real quick before we go, uh, just a reminder. You've seen these. I know they've been in the bulletin every single Sunday, and we're doing that intentionally just in case. Again, if, if you have not... Uh, done so already, you can take that out of your bulletin and leave that in the pew if you've already done an estimate of giving card. Um, but really, this is for you to take home this week if you have not already turned one in and to pray and think about, Lord, how do you want to use my resources in these estimate of giving cards? And then next week, we'll have a time and service that you can bring them forward. Uh, it'll probably be during communion. You can bring it forward as a family and place them in the offering basket. If you're not aware of how to fill this out, just contact me and I'll help you out with, uh, with completing that. And again, please note at the bottom that it says, I understand this estimate of giving may be revisited or canceled at any time per my, my request because we know things happen in life that change circumstances. And please note too that when it comes to what you're putting on this card, we know that you're exchanging those skills that God has given to you to make the money that you make. There's not intended any, any intention again for you to feel pressure on this, but just part of us in developing a budget for our church, this is just the, the reality is we have to kind of have some idea of what the budget is going to look like, what we're going to have financially uh, given to the church. And so again, not meant to be a burden, but to help us in budgeting. Help us as a church be good stewards, right? It's very, very important. So if you have any questions during the week about this, just holler at me and I'll help you out with that. And, uh, and just all I ask is prayerfully consider, Lord, again, how do you want to use me? How do you want to use my resources? What does that look like? Let me place those in your hands. Big thing today as you leave here, no self-doubt about the gifts that God has given to you. I know there's probably someone, someone in here this morning that was thinking, like, I really just don't feel like I'm good at anything. Maybe I'm the only one that ever feels that way, right? But I just want to tell you, you yourself, whoever you are, God has equipped you in a powerful way, and he wants to use you in a powerful way. Just place it into his hands and let him work. So here this benediction. Go forward now as God's people, knowing that he has equipped you for the work at hand. Go forward seeking to be a good steward over those gifts, over those talents that God has given to you. Go forward confident in the fact that when you place those into his hands, he will do a powerful and mighty work. Go forward challenged and encouraged by seeing the story of Lydia and knowing that you too can make an impact in spreading the good news of Christ Jesus. Amen.